Well, this was a piece that really I was, I was thrilled to see and amazed to see the first time I saw it. It was collected by Sarah Dillo, who was um, our acquisition coordinator and a collector of quilts worldwide. And, and she lived right here in Fremont, Nebraska. So she built an incredible collection here. And I, I, this one is especially memorable for me because Sarah was a dear friend and she called me the day that this came in the mail. And she said, you just, you have to come to Fremont. I, I've got to show someone who really understands w about quilts. They, they have to, uh, the grocery store guy bags my groceries doesn't get what this quilt is about. So I went down and Sarah had this out on a bed in her home and I had just never seen anything like it. Um, in subsequent years, we got to know Catherine Berenson very well, who sold this to Sarah. We eventually acquired Catherine's personal collection of French textiles, and we showed that uh, about a year ago in an exhibition here. Now, Catherine believes that this was made in a workshop, and this is this was made between 1750 and 1800. So this kind of textile at that time would have been a luxury item, probably made for someone in a in a French chateau somewhere, not your everyday uh, worker. Um, so they. It was made in a workshop and it was probably made as a bridal gift for a couple who were marrying. And there's a lot of symbols on it of uh, wishing the couple uh, much happiness, uh, you know, uh, uh, reproduction, you know, uh, fertility, all of those kind of things are symbolized by all the different flowers and fruits that are, are, are done in this quilt. Um, Catherine believes that she's located about a dozen quilts that are so similar in their design and their technique that they were probably all worked by the same workshop, which is truly amazing. Um, this is incredible because we looked at the first quilt Sarah or the first quilt that artist James purchased and it had stuff work in it where you go from behind and you add extra stuffing. This is corded so as it was stitched they were adding this layered uh, this this textural effect through cording. So if you turn this quilt over you can't tell which is the top and the back. There's no sign of them going back and adding that stuffing. They were doing it as they went and the level of detail in it and the designs. Um, I absolutely love the tomatoes on this quilt. We love that here in Nebraska, you know, we're the Cornhusker State, this quilt has corn on it. All of these symbols of, of fertility and, 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 and a happy life that they used in this. And then that, this incredible kind of arabesque swirl that they use throughout the background to fill it is just stunning. And of course the initials in the center. And this would have been something that um, you would have just laid over the bridal bed as kind of a decoration for a special day. And then evidently in Marseille, um, on s a certain holidays of the year, women will take their white work quilts and hang them out the window of their home. So as you go down the street, you'll see these white quilts hanging out the windows, which uh, it would just be an amazing sight. Catherine Berenson has just been a, a wonderful friend to the um, university and the research she's done on these quilts is amazing. And you can read all about that exhibition on our website. All of our exhibitions are online. So if you're interested in learning more about these French white work quilts, you can find that information there. And um, Catherine also did a beautiful catalog. And, and it was so interesting, um, you know, things like um, the plague. The plague hit Marseille in the late 1700s and it just completely destroyed their business. Actually, it might have even been the early 1700s, but they were the sole producers of these beautiful white work quilts and then the plague came through and people were afraid of them and it decimated their country and it decimated the budget or their, their economy because they couldn't support themselves through making these pieces anymore. Then we see the, the other countries picked up this style. England and France picked it up because it was an, e uh, an economic boon. It was a surefi surefire seller, and so other countries picked it up. And, and that's kind of what textiles is oftentimes about, is this kind of cutthroat market where one person did something that was really successful and the next person comes along and copies it because everybody wanted textiles. And the more you could produce them, the less the costs you know, would come down, more people could buy them. So it's always been about big business and, and all of these different crazy things that combine to, to really create history.